Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Polynerd Express Pause. As always, it's me, it's Shad, the face and voice of polynerdic.com, here to discuss with you a thing that, you know, I was, I was putting together this week's podcast, the Ordinary Podcast, drops every Saturday morning here on polynerdic.com, on SoundCloud, on CastBox, and other podcast services. Not all of them, but on a few. Um, I was putting this week's show together, and when I was pulling stories for the news, I come across the one that was on everyone's mind earlier this week, and that was the announcement that Spider-Man is coming to the upcoming Avengers game as a PlayStation exclusive. Initially, when I saw this, I kind of laughed because it's just such a a perfect Sony move. Like it, it just it just feels like a Sony move. Um, and I say that with no no vitriol, no no <clears throat> no heated nature behind it. It just feels like just right in Sony's wheelhouse. And uh, I initially thought, like many others, that oh, Spider Man from the Insomniac game is doing a crossover thing in this Avengers game by Crystal Dynamics. They've worked out a deal. And we're going to see that Spider-Man. Because if you've played that Spider-Man game, you know that is not the normal Spider-Man. That is not the Earth-616 Spider-Man. That is a separate version of Spider-Man in a different universe. So that's what I thought originally. But then as you go on and you read on like this article here on Game Informer, you find out that, no, this is just regular old Spider-Man, regular old member of the Avengers, just like Captain America is regular old Captain America, Thor is regular old Thor... There's nothing special about it. This is just an exclusive thing that Sony's version of Avengers is getting. Mind you, Avengers is going to be on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and PC, and they're planning on doing a PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S version of it. Series X, excuse me. Um, So this is kind of a huge thing because... You know, it, it kind of set the games media, games universe, games world, whatever you want to call it, um, social sphere, a buzz in that, like, people started discussing, is this anti-consumer? Is this move anti-consumer? And now, we're going to discuss it this week on the podcast, because it'll be me, Sean, and Jen again. But as I was putting the show together and organizing my notes, I, I couldn't help but think this is the perfect thing to have a little miniature discussion on on press pause with and that is is this anti-consumer um and i happen to be of the of the mindset that it is and isn't it's both um yes it's anti-consumer in that it's cutting out two-thirds of the audience pretending that the audiences are equal sizes it's cutting out two-thirds microsoft players don't get it PC players don't get it. I've heard of people already canceling pre-orders on those two consoles. Um, As someone that's console agnostic, as I like to say, I play games wherever they're available. Um, I I talked about on last week's podcast that my Xbox is largely my Game Pass box. I play things that come to Game Pass on that console. I very rarely buy Xbox games. Almost everything else, obviously PlayStation exclusives, but things that are on both consoles typically end up on the PlayStation and if there's a game that is on multiple and I think it would be better handheld, I'll buy it on the Switch. Um, A lot of indie games I I just like on the Switch. Um, Spider-Man being on the PlayStation version of the game and the PlayStation version of the game only is kind of a raw deal. Um, Like I said, it's very in Sony's wheelhouse it is very much an old school console war thing, uh, which you know I, I I read and listened to a number of think pieces that the console war doesn't really exist anymore uh, because the two companies are fighting two completely different battles. Microsoft wants you on Game Pass; they're not even really like they would love for you to buy the new Xbox, but they're setting it up for the next couple of years that you won't have to. Whereas Sony is very much going in the other direction, saying we want you to buy our new console. In fact, while our new console will play old games, 
for many games, your old controller won't work on that. That's another story we're going to cover on this week's show as well. But I'm of two minds. I, I do think it is both. I think it is it's, it's very pro-consumer if you're a Sony consumer, right? Like if you're what they call a Sony pony, um, this, is a good, this is a good thing for you. If you were planning on playing the Avengers game on the PlayStation 4, this is a great get for you. In 2021, you'll have exclusive content. There'll be an in-game event that is geared towards putting Spider-Man into the world. Uh, by all accounts, that's the way it's going to work. He's not just going to pop up on a menu someday. There's going to be an event around it. Um, so that's great for you. Honestly, if I were to play Avengers, because I'm still on the fence about it, I, I need to see more of it uh, before I can commit to playing it, uh, strictly because it's being described as kind of a Destiny-like, uh, kind of a loot-based, grinded-out kind of game in the Avengers world. I'm not sure I want that. Um since I much more prefer my single-player experiences than my cooperative multiplayer. Cooperative multiplayer has a place, but I, uh, I'm i not sold on the concept of Avengers yet. So maybe to you that means I don't have a dog in this fight and therefore my opinion's irrelevant because I have heard that opinion floated uh, because I'm not invested in it. My opinion doesn't matter. Uh, but if I were to play the Avengers, if I were to see that it is worth playing, I would probably play it on the PlayStation. No offense to the Xbox, uh, and absolutely none to the PC, because I just can't play PC games like that. Um, I would probably play it on the PlayStation, which means I would get the, the Spider-Man. But I do see it as anti-consumer in the way that Sony is traditionally anti-consumer. And that, like, and, it, and this ties into this game situation. Cross-play. How long... Did Sony just dig in their heels and say no to crossplay? The whole world was screaming for it. Let us play a cross console. Let me, the Xbox user, play with my friend, the PlayStation user. And we slowly started to see it. You know, Microsoft and Nintendo worked together on Minecraft. You saw some crossplay there. And then we, there was that incident where uh, the car soccer game, Rocket League went cross-play out of the blue, and then it was like, oh, we accidentally flipped the Switch, uh, revealing that it is as easy as flipping a Switch. Um, and then I think Fortnite might have had something. I, I, it was either Fortnite or Rocket League that had the accidental cross-play. Uh, but now Fortnite has cross-play. Modern Warfare has cross-play. Cross-play is king now. It, it is an existing thing. It is something we're used to. Um, so from a cross-play perspective... You know, Sony dug their heels in. That was a very anti-consumer move. That's, I mean, I myself made that argument, beat that drum, that Sony being hesitant to jump on the cross-play thing was anti-consumer, ultimately. Uh, they've lessened that stance now, but here we are with a situation where we now have Sony flexing Sony's muscles and getting Spider-Man exclusive to their version of the game. Does that mean Avengers will not have cross-play? Does that mean we're taking a step back? We're regressing. You know, Sony likes to be like a progressive company or likes to, you know, people like to think of the, the, the progression of the systems. Um, but one can argue Microsoft and Nintendo to an extent, surprisingly, have been way more progressive ideologically as far as cross-play and stuff like that. So Spider-Man being in the Sony version of the Avengers and only the Sony version of the Avengers, does that mean we're not going to have crossplay, Or if we have crossplay, the Sony people can't use their Spider-Man when they play with their Xbox friends? Is that how it's going to shake out? This is why it's a bad idea. This is why I say it is anti-consumer. Um, it's very pro-Sony, very pro-money, very pro-Sony consumer, but in the overall picture, it's hard to say that it's not anti-consumer. And I say all this with no venom for Sony. Like, it makes sense. When I say it's an old-school Sony move, it makes sense in the business of Sony and the PlayStation. Do I like it? Not really. Um, you know, in a, an ideal world, our, our console manufacturers would play better together, and then we would have, you know, we each everybody would have their exclusives. 
which give you I, I saw this idea floated and i wish i saved it so i could so i could credit the exact twitter user that i saw post it but the idea i saw floated was exclusives on a console like your gods of war your horizon zero dawns those things give players more things to experience um because it is technically more content you know like if you can afford it if you can swing it if you if you can play multiple consoles if you can be truly console agnostic exclusives give you a wider variety of experiences exclusive content on the other hand is limiting and handcuffing and it robs people of a thing everyone who was excited to play this game are now finding out that they have to pay sixty dollars if you only have an xbox and you love the avengers and you want to play the avengers game more than anything else this year say it's your most anticipated game of the year for whatever reason but you have an xbox you are now being punished by sony for not purchasing the playstation say you bought the xbox because it was cheaper this is what happened with me last gen the xbox 360 was cheaper than the playstation 3 i got an xbox 360 I love Avengers. I want to play this Avengers game. I only have an Xbox. Now I'm being asked to pay $60 for a game that is objectively less than the Sony version. Because let's be real, Spider-Man might be possibly, in many people's eyes, the best Marvel character. I know people that love Spider-Man above all else. You know, they, they love Spider-Man more than Batman in DC. They love Spider-Man more than Superman. They love Spider-Man more, more than Iron Man or Captain America or the Human Torch or any of those characters. I'd have to look at figures to see what makes more money, but there is an argument to be had that Spider-Man is Marvel's big thing. Now, one of the three versions of this game, Steam, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, only one of those versions has Marvel's biggest character in it. That's where it's anti-consumer. Again, no hatred for Sony, but I fall on the side of it being anti-consumer overall. You know, if you're a Sony pony, as they like to say, and I say that again, again, no heat, don't get mad, don't get pissy. Uh, that's just my favorite thing that I've heard on online discourse is I think it's Sony pony, and I thought I heard Xbox bot, but I could be wrong about that one. Um, fanboyism of any kind toxic stupid um play your games where you can play your games man play the games where they're the best way you can play them uh, if you can play them on pc and you have a high-end pc fuck the consoles play them on pc man um i just happen to not have a high-end pc so i play on consoles i grew up on consoles i'm a console guy anyway enough enough defending my stance on console ag agnosticism um yeah, I, I fall on the side of it being bad. Um, not bad for Sony, not bad for Sony fans, but bad for the overall community. Um, I guess right now there is a preview weekend going on if you pre-ordered. Um, I think it's the preview might only be Sony exclusive, though. I, I haven't looked into it because, again, I am waiting to see the final game. I want to see what people say about the final game. Or the final game, Because you know it's going to be patched to shit because it's a live service game. You know, it's a game that they're trying to make Marvel Destiny. So, you know there's going to be patches and iterations and stuff. I want to wait until I know if the game is good or if it's not good at launch, does it get good? Much in the way that Destiny did. I don't know if you remember, but the original Destiny launched pretty in pretty poor shape. And then around the time the Taken King came out, that's when people really started saying, that's a thing you should play. You know, now that Taken King's out, get the whole package. It's a good thing now. So I need to see personally if that's what Avengers does before I make a decision if I'm buying it. If I buy it, it will be on the Sony. And I say that because the PlayStation's back there behind me. The Xbox is right here right here in front of me. Um, I'll buy it on the, on the PlayStation regardless if it's worth playing. If it's not worth playing, this whole argument's stupid and we all look foolish. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say. I, I try to keep it under 15 minutes, and we're right at 15 minutes, so I did good. Um, 
Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. Polynerdic on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, Discord, Twitch, and YouTube. This is going up on YouTube. Uh, all pre-recorded stuff finds its way to YouTube. All live stuff is on Twitch, and a good deal of Twitch comes to YouTube later on. But uh, make sure you follow on both or subscribe on both, either or. I don't have subscribers on Twitch yet, so you can't subscribe yet. Follow on Twitch, subscribe on YouTube. That's the ticket. Uh, and also make sure you bookmark polynerdic.com where all this stuff goes up. You know, I've been posting content every day for just shy of a year. Uh, at the end of the month, we will hit one year straight if I can continue it going. Um, make sure you tune in on Saturday mornings for the Ordinary Podcast uh, this week. It should be, as long as this, our schedules hold, it'll be Sean, Jen, and myself again discussing things, including this story in greater detail get their takes on it. You now know that I think it's both is and isn't uh, anti-consumer. It just depends on where you, where you fall. Um, I want to see their takes and we're going to discuss other stuff, uh, what we've been playing, what we've been watching, what we've been reading, the news, occasionally a topic. It's all a good time. 90 minutes to two hours. Sometimes I try to keep it to an hour, uh, but we have a tendency to get talking when the three of us are together. Um, so we're going to uh, do that. Make sure you tune into that. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe, all the places I said. I'm rambling. I'm signing off now. Goodbye. See you soon on Twitch and other places. Again, make sure you follow polynerdic.com at the very least so you see everything. See you soon.